but they're just cheap cotton gloves. And here's how you fix it. <laughs> you cut off, you cut off the thumb. Evidently, these scissors need sharpening. And you cut off all the fingers except for the pinky. There you go. You throw this part out. <laughs> Don't you love when people give you instructions and they tell you the stupid part too? Like, <laughs> throw the bag in the trash. <laughs> How to cook a turkey. Take the turkey out of the bag. Throw the bag in the trash. <laughs> anyway, okay. Hi, my name's Dan. Thanks for joining me today. I want to talk about, um, I've got a job where I am illustrating a book. And uh, I want to show you the process that I'm doing that. Um, and the first thing, I want to show you two illustrations that I've already worked on this morning. And I'm trying to think, how long did like did this one take me? Uh, I would guess that somewhere between an hour and an hour and a, the, the amount of work I'm going to show you is about an hour and a half worth of work. Okay, the the assignment here is a hello Geronimo welcome back um the assignment here is a groom carrying his bride into the bridal chamber which is a cave with a heated uh, uh a natural spring heated pool candles and so on and so forth okay that that's not that's the assignment and you know, the, the, I guess the thing is when you're doing illustrations for money, you're asked to do unusual things often. <laughs> okay. And I've never, I don't think I've ever drawn a man carrying a woman in a cave with candles and a pond. So there you go. Okay. This is the very first sketch that I did. And um, let me show you the tools I was using. First of all, the, I always, when I start my drawing, I, I draw in the proper manner. That means two things. Number one, I hold my drawing tool side saddle, not this grip. Now, forgive me if you've heard me say this too many times already, but let's go over it one more time just in case you missed it. Why should an artist, let me give you the whole physique, in fact, why should an artist not draw like this? Several reasons. One, when you're drawing like this, what part of my anatomy is moving? My fingers, my digits, right? Got it? There are several, a couple things. One is this is way too restricted. I mean, if you're good, I suppose if the drawings you're doing are going to be, you know, this big, then yeah, this grip is perfectly appropriate. <laughs> you can't even see that, can you? <laughs> you get it? If you're drawing something that big, like we did in school, you know, when you're supposed to be listening to the teacher and you're supposed to be taking notes and instead you're doing scribbling, then of course you hold it this way. But uh, that is, you don't hold it that way. When you hold your drawing utensil this way, and I, I just say hold it in front of you, slap your palm on it, and grab it. <laughs> That'll do, except, okay, it's like this, and I just do the one extra thing of tucking it under my pee. Oh, I forgot. Why am I wearing the glove? <laughs> Some people say, you hurt your hand or something? You got injured? <laughs> no, 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 no. My hand is not injured, and no, I am not protecting my hand from the paper. <laughs> All these things have been suggested to me. No, 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 no. I'm protecting the paper from the oils in my hand. Okay, enough said. Okay, so you hold it this way, and, um, but this, see, this doesn't work. So in combination with the grip, you have to point the plane at your eyeballs. So this is the way I always start my drawing. So this, now back to the job I've been working on for this morning. This was my first sketch. Let me zoom in again so that you can see that. Now a couple different things I want to say about your first, your first sketch. Number one, your very first idea out of the gate is probably not your best idea. Are you with me? When, and again, I'm talking to artists. The same thing would apply to writers, photographers, and so on, a whole lot of creative areas. The first idea to pop in your head 
is not necessarily the best idea. And that's exactly the case here. Um, I looked at this sketch and I scratched my proverbial chin, said, hmm, maybe I can do better. And let me tell you uh, one very specific. So I'm doing, I think, 30 illustrations <clears throat> for this book. Let me, again, my fellow artists, let me make you aware of something. I'm going to write it down. Beware, I'm going to, in quotation marks, beware the snapshot view. Beware the snapshot view. Now, what does that mean? That's my terminology, but here's what it means. And uh, I'm going to actually get up and act this out for you. I'm going to uh, point my camera over there at the opposite wall. Here's what the snapshot view is. Um, the snapshot view is the picture, taking a picture with a snapshot, is the picture that amateurs take with their cameras, <laughs> with their Polaroids, <laughs> with their inst Instamatics, <laughs> even though now, now they take them all with their phone, you understand? But here's the way an amateur, let's pretend this is my phone. Here's the way an amateur takes a picture. Got it? What's wrong with that? Maybe nothing. <laughs> but what's wrong with taking all of your pictures like this? Do, do, do you see what's going to happen? All of the, your photographs are going to be at like eye level boring. A, a, a professional photographer, let's say, Here's, here's how an, an amateur takes a picture of the top of this desk. Click, 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 click. Are you with me? Here's how a serious photographer takes a picture of this desk. Click, 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 click. Click, click, click. You see why I had to act this out. Does that make sense? Amateur, here's what amateur takes the sloppy, easy, lazy way out never even thinking about creativity they just go and i call that snap shooting that's what snap shooters do shoot click 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 okay now that's photographers now let's go back to illustration if you're not careful as an illustrator i if i'm not careful i will do exactly the same thing i'll make all of my views straight on as if I were, here's my, here's my, my camera, here's the little flash, here's my finger on the button, click, click, click. And if I've got 30 illustrations to do for this book, they're going to get really boring if everyone is snapshot view. Now this one is, this is straight on. Let's see, let's see how I'm doing. That one also is straight on. That one's kind of straight on. Oh, here's one. This one is a low angle, as if the photographer laid on the ground with his camera just uh, four inches off ground level and we're looking up at this girl and this is a bunch of snakes uh, that have been thrown at the girl and uh, from this angle it makes the snakes look really big you see that makes sense um, here's one where it's a girl in a tree house but it's a high angle I'm not looking straight at a girl in a tree house I'm looking down so uh, so on and so forth. Here's a, a shot of a girl from a high angle uh, and so on. So th I just want, want you to know that this is the kind of thing that a good illustrator will be aware of. Now, speaking of good illustrators, let me tell you uh, uh, about the name of a good illustrator. I mean, good, 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 good illustrator. illustrator. And his name is Chris Van Alsberg. I believe it's a U. Um, if you live in America, you've seen this guy's work. You just didn't know it. I looked at his website just a little while ago, and he has, he's written 18 children's books. When my kids were little, two, three, four, five years old, um, we made sure that we looked at Chris Van Allsburg books. <coughs> and my kids are now in their 30s, so mid-30s. So he's been, doing, he's been doing children's books for a long time. Um, here's why I mention him. 
because he google him look him up by the way if you're an artist and you want to be a better artist look at the best there's a slight tendency among students to look at other students artwork are you with me like like tumblr and on um deviant art website there's a tendency for amateurs and beginners and especially young people students to look at other young people's art and sort of compare themselves to other 13 year olds 15 18 20 year olds not a good idea you want to no matter what age you are i mean it's okay to look at it. i don't mean that but don't fixate on that you want to find the best best you want to find people whose artwork makes you cry because it's so good or laugh or groan roll your eyes make you want to quit and give up i'm being facetious but chris van allsberg is that for me i look at his stuff and i go oh oh will i ever be as good as chris van allsberg but probably not but i'm chasing him another one i'm chasing is james gurney i was looking at showed uh, some of his videos to my grandchildren just two nights ago uh, that that's James Gurney while while I'm singing the praises of incredible uh, illustrators here are two of them for you James Gurney father of author of Dinotopia Chris Van Allsburg okay I mentioned if you're American you know this guy um, even though you don't know it because he's had two major motion pictures and now three based on two of his books one is um, the Polar Express based on his book and the other is Jumanji now two movies have been made based on that. And the, again, the reason I'm mentioning Chris is because of the alternate angle, alternate viewpoint. He's a master of, in all of his books, of not doing the snapshot view. Okay? So that's a, that was a long tirade, wasn't it? This was my first shot. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute. I can do better than that. I'm going to throw that out now. By the way, normally my second drawing would be on the back, but I've decided this morning to keep all my sketches so that I can show you guys. That's number one. Here's number two. Uh, there's number two. So I decided, wait a minute. How about if I uh, want to show a man carrying a woman, and in the story, the woman is slight, so she's quite small. So the man, fairly good, strong man, Carrying a woman, how about if I make it a high view? So do you see the difference? This is, this is, the camera is eight feet in the air and it's looking down on this couple. Now, one of the things I did is I, I just went to Google and I typed in man carrying woman. Found a whole bunch, printed out this one, uh, which helped me quite a bit because I went, oh yeah, so the man's hands typically go, see, this is what I wanted to see. The man's hand go under her knees and under her rib cage and her hand, her arms go around his neck. I kind of already knew most of that, all of that maybe, but I just wanted to make sure. So that helped me, I'm gonna throw that out. Um, now I would like you to notice something very specific. Let me get you down here just a little bit closer to the view here. Bear with me while I shake you around a little bit. I want you to get in as close as you can. Um, this is a trick that I often do. And again, this would have been drawn like this on this board, leaning back. Look at the shape of these people's heads. They're square. When you're drawing people, especially from an unusual perspective, let me grab a piece of scrap paper. One of these things that I just threw in the trash will do. Um, let me... <laughs> You find another one. There we go. I'm going to draw on the back of this. Um, when you're drawing people, especially from an unusual... Now, if you're just drawing um, snapshot... Do, do, do you, you get my terminology now? If you're just drawing a person front, head-on, or even three-quarter view like this, it's pretty easy to say, okay, here's, here's a human head. You've, there's all kinds of ways to learn to do the human head and so forth. This is, I'm, I'm sort of skipping them all right now and just giving you real quick. But what if you say, oh, but wait a minute. I want to view this person's head 
from above as if we were looking as I am doing in this sketch from above. Then what I'll do is I reduce the human head to this rectangle. And this is a rectangle or it's a cube. This is a cube you should know. Let me show you a human head from the front. There's a human head from the front. Let me show you a human head from the side. There it is. <laughs> and um, but <laughs> I mean kind of funny. By the way, this is uh, George uh, Bridgman, B R I D G E, I think, M A N. George Bridgman. I've shown you his books several times. This is hats off to George Bridgman. So anytime that you're drawing a human figure, not just the head, but a human figure in extreme dimensions, many times it helps to draw the human figure as a super, uh, super geometric, super architectural. Did you see what I'm doing here? This is again, this is me looking down at a person. Their head is turned slightly to the side. And um, what else should I have them doing? I have this arm going back and this arm going forward. Um, and then the hips are, I'm actually, I visualize this all the time. In this case, I'm actually literally drawing it as, so this is a person either walking briskly or um, perhaps running in this direction, but we're looking down at him. Do you see how drawing the figure, and just in case you can't see that, let me do some real quick shading. Drawing the figure as a block person really helps, helps you visualize the anatomy. Does that make sense? So that's exactly what I started to do on sketch number two. So again, I showed you sketch number one. It's all a mess now. This is sketch number two. And then, that was sketch number two. Then I did this trick. I turned the light table on, turned the page over, and did sketch number three, tracing through, because now I'm seeing a mirror image. Do you see? So here's sketch number two, pretty messy still. Here's sketch number three. Quite a bit, still using the blockhead technique, the squared off technique, getting quite a bit more literal. And sketch number, sketch one, two, three, sketch number four. So now I've gotten away from the blockhead. Oh, and by the way, so yes, I turned it over again and, and then traced it back this way. And now you can see I'm starting to do a little bit of features, working out some of the background, working out a bunch of the uh, figure issues. And then here's my final sketch, sketch number five for this particular job. You see, I've got the, and I'm still, of course, like I just turned this over just now and I went, oh, you know what? I think this nose needs to be like a hundredth of an inch to the left. So I just made that adjustment. And then I did some shading here. And of course, when I, do, when I do shading, then I hold my pencil. You don't have to, but I typically hold my pencil in the traditional grip. Okay, so there you go. That's about an hour and a half worth of work. And that's what I'm gonna show to my client. And if he approves of it, then I'll still tweak it a little bit and then I'll do do the final illustration in ink. Now let me show you that same process one more time, this time just a little bit faster. Um, the assignment here, the assignment this time, was to show the same couple at their wedding ceremony. They're standing in the, again, and this is in a cave as well, standing in a, I think it was a cave, um, standing in a circle with friends all around. So it wasn't a church kind of setting at all. <coughs> and this time, I didn't do a snapshot view. You, want, you know what, now what I mean by snapshot view, right? Head on, you know, stupid shot like that. Now I said, no, no, no. I how about, let's make it, I thought about, how about an overhead view? No. How about a, a, a worm's eye view? So that's how I started out this one. Start at the very beginning. There's sketch number one. There's sketch number two, and again, here I am exactly using the 
the blocks, especially for the heads. And then the, there's a couple people standing up close and then people behind them. That's sketch number two. Then uh, this one I did pretty quickly. Sketch number three, which I liked just fine. So I was essentially done after I'd done three, except that these two figures are out of perspective. <laughs> so I scanned, put, slapped this on my, on my uh, scanner and, and got it into Photoshop and just basically moved this person up and this person down. And there's my final, hi Nicole, this is my final sketch. Got it? So I did that basically in three sketches and just a tiny bit of Photoshop to correct that. Okay, now let's let's have some fun together where I do in real time do a sketch for you. And this one does not involve figures. It involves a house, a building. Okay, let me read it here. It's Grimma's and Ma's Cup of Comfort in and Cafe. So this is part of the story. I'm going to back you up just a little bit because I'm going to hold it this way. That is to say, I'm going to hold my, uh, the, the drawing plane now points at my nose. Again, I, I, can, I can turn you, so to speak, into a better drawer in five seconds if you'll just switch. By the way, I didn't explain earlier. When your fingers are moving versus your whole arm is moving, the part of your brain that controls your arm is a better artist than the part of your brain that controls your fingers. That's because when you hold a, a drawing utensil this way, you are locked in to the control freak center of your brain. This is a controlled grip, and a controlled grip is not good for expressive, creative drawing. That, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, so let's start. So um, this is supposed to be a view of a of a coffee shop slash in comfort in coffee shop and it's the, the the setting of this story is sort of a mixed kind of quasi 19th century early 20th century there's no cars in the story people are walking and traveling by horse and buggy and so forth um, but it's not locked into like 1870 or 1890 so it's it's one of, it's a fictitious time frame um, so I'm gonna do a house and I've already thought about this somewhat I think for some reason, I, I want this to be, and an, at least what I'm going to propose to my, to my client, is an overhead view, an aerial view, as if my camera is attached to a, a drone. Okay? So I'm, why do I feel that? Um, I'm not sure. But let me just, let's just start scribbling and, and see what happens. By the way, there's an awful lot of that in the world of art. Let's start scribbling and see what happens. So I'm thinking of very traditional Americana, if you will, an American style 19th century house. And by the way, I'm doing a whole bunch of linear perspective here uh, without drawing attention to the fact that I'm doing linear perspective. I'm just doing it on the fly. Uh, I'm not, for this illustration, um, close is good enough. Um, definitely fireplace uh, chimney over here. Okay, two dormers. And then a porch roof. Now this, as I'm all of a sudden as I'm doing this, I'm going. I don't know. This might be a little too high of an angle. So let me finish it a little bit. And then I, I'm already thinking. I sort of think. And this is a screened-in porch because we want the the customers to be able to eat their tea, have their tea in crumpets. <laughs> on a screened-in porch. By the way, a, a big part of being an artist, I think, is having this imagination where you're not, you're not, um, whatever, I don't know how to say, you, you are, you are the creator of your own movie. Um, I think for me, a lot of this 
came from my many years of doing cartoons where I would literally, while, while I was doing cartoons, I would literally stand up in my studio. And by the way, uh, you saw this earlier, but I didn't say anything about it. Why is it that I have a mirror always in all of my studios? It is for this very reason. Let me, can you see me in that mirror? Almost. There you go. So in my studio, I'll stand up and I'll, I'll pose the way my, you know, the way the character is that I'm drawing. And I can see myself in the mirror. So that helps me instantly to know um, how to draw. Is my mic acting up? I wonder if I'm peeking out. Okay, t thank you so much for that. Here's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to... And just go with the... I'm very close to going out and buying a very expensive mic. Thank you, Geronimo, for letting me know that. Okay, so back to the illustration. Um, I was saying that a part of being an illustrator is having the, the ability to make up the story like in this case the story is simply the the house that i'm drawing um but as you know as i like the story is the customers want to have their tea and scones in a screened in porch that's part of the story you know that's not i mean that my story that my client didn't tell me that he said make sure it's a screened in porch so they can have their tea and crumpets on the on the no 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 i made all that up this is and I think that's part of what it means to be an illustrator, to tell you the truth. And, and, and it's a good gift to have uh, with all. Thank you, Geronimo. Appreciate that. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, I'm so dis dismayed by my sound problems. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and then there will be a path. There will be gardens here, bushes. Now I'm... You know what I'm trying to decide? Oh, and by the way, the path is an organic shape sidewalk, not not straight and rigid. Or the curved sidewalk gives a warmth, a human dimension to the architecture. Uh, and then up here, of course, will be trees. Okay, oh, and there needs to be a sign here somewhere. Maybe be, just because of the way the I've done the drawing, maybe the sign could be out here. So there's the name. Of the sign. I mean, there's the, the name of the establishment on that sign. You know, so I'm asking myself, is this quaint? Is this, it, it, it might be a little bit too high of an angle. Would be better if I came down a little bit. You know, I should have people going in, shouldn't I? Absolutely. So then, then again, I'm in the challenge of drawing people from strange angles when well, i should have the door open welcoming people in so that there we go that's a psychological trick make sure the door is open and i don't know if it opens that way or this way i think it opens the other side opens up again i'm writing you have to write make up the story in my own mind and then i can put the the woman proprietor standing in here opening the door greeting her guests oh isn't that a great story there we go. And then there's a, some birds sitting on top of the the gable of the, the house, the, the peak of the house. And I've got some gingerbread um, shingles over here on this end. That warms it up a lot, too. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> um, These things that divide up windows, break up windows, are called mullions. And they, um, mullions give a sense of warmth to, to an architecture. Take the mullions away and it looks more like 1950s picture window. I'm thinking here. Thinking here. Tree again. Now let, let me think about lighting just for a second. Be more fun if the lighting was dramatic in some way. Maybe coming across instead of like traditional lighting coming from the right. How about if the lighting was coming from the left? 
Oh, by the way, I mentioned Chris Van Allsburg a little while ago. He's a master of the alternate viewpoint, which is what I'm, what I'm trying to do here. He's also a master of dramatic lighting. I mean, of course, he's just a master at everything. So is James Gurney. Uh, some of my other favorite illustration the illustrators I've already mentioned. Um, like several months ago, I, I did a copy of uh, Chris Payne, C.F. Payne, uh, Drew Struzan, Drew Blair. There's so many incredible illustrators in the world. I have a very high regard for illustrators, as you may have heard. Huh. Yeah, that's actually quite nice, having the having the light um, come from this angle instead of what you, the no, more normal would be light hitting the front of the house. And then that also allows me to do this very key thing, which is having light come out of the windows. You know, it's like I say, Thomas can cade it a little bit, have, have light coming out of the windows. <laughs> That's a great way to add warmth to the atmosphere of the scene. Well, I'm going to, I like it well enough. I'm going to continue. So here's what I do. And this is part of the reason I, I'm working on tracing paper, vellum, graphics paper. It's easier to, to turn over and see the coming through the other way. Let me zoom in back in. You are welcome, Joanne. Yeah, Chris Van Allsburg. So here I'm switching grips. I don't know that I need to, or, but I'm going to start for just a moment. So now I'm in my control grip, but you can see the, I hope you can understand the appropriateness of that switch now because I've already done the creative part of the drawing. And um, now it's more just a matter of execution for the, so the control freak grip is appropriate at this point because I'm I want a little more accuracy again because oh let's put some gingerbread in right here uh, not that's not the word I'm looking for is it yeah it is that's gingerbread yeah 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 let's do so it's Victorian architecture which kind of you know I, I don't know if my client is gonna want but he probably is okay with that my client is a man the author of this book Um, by the way, one of the reasons I like this, my, one of my new toys is this lead holder. Here's the size of the lead. Get it really thick. And there's the lead holder. Somebody, one of you, uh, last week said, oh yeah, that, they're all the rage these days. Well, I didn't know they were all the rage. This one was given to me. Um, but I'm finding that I, I really like it a lot. As opposed to a 5mm mechanical pencil which I also like and use a lot um, but the the fat lead on this uh, with this tool keeps me from getting bogged down in tiny details does that make sense the fact and I, I have found let me go back to my other drawings just for a minute especially when I'm doing when I am doing figurative stuff like let's 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 pick this for a moment when I'm doing figurative stuff like this, um, I am finding the the thickness of the of the lead really helps because it it forces a level of abstraction on me, the drawer, that I I'd be ten, if I was using a fine point pencil, I'd be very tempted to, to try to get exact exact exact. But I'm finding I'm actually drawing better with a fat. Now this is counterintuitive, so I hope you're paying attention. I'm actually drawing better with a fat point tool than with than I would with a sharp tool. Because the fat keeps me thinking abstractly. Uh, keep, it keeps me from getting bogged down in detail. Let me see if I can find another one that I think is a good, good example of that. Yeah, here's another, here's a, a, a scene where they're inching their way um, clutch pencil. Is that what that's called? Thank you, Ian. 
Um, so here again, and I don't know how much of this you can see, but this is man, little girl, man, inching their way along a very narrow ledge uh, uh, along a mountain. And um, you see the, the thickness of the line keeps me from getting too specific. And as I said, I, I just find myself drawing better. So yay. Um, if I didn't have a clutch pencil, is that what you called it? I'd, I'd probably be doing this, these drawings with some kind of fat pencil like this. Not this, because these don't erase, but a, a big fat pencil. But this is a nice tool. Finding, I'm enjoying it very much. Okay, so back to... Oh, I know. How about... I wonder if... I wonder if I could get away with stuff like this. Now, this is definitely Victorian. I don't know what this is called, but it goes along the ridge of the house. Is that quaint or what? <laughs> now again, my, my client might say, nah, that's too that 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 limits us too much to a real Victorian look, and I want it to be more rustic. He may very well say that. But I feel like it's uh, my job as an illustrator kind of to make him think of things he didn't wouldn't have thought of on his own. And it's easier to remove this than it is to think of it. Am I making sense? Um, it's easy to not think of creative things. <laughs> Are you with me? It's easy to not think of creative sol uh, uh, solutions. It's, but once you've thought of them, it's also easy to remove it. So I'd rather go overboard uh, coming, having too many creative um, things than not enough. This, and that also explains why I've created such... A fairly complex house. Oh, thank you, John. Oh, totally, totally, totally. The reason for drawing it backwards is I talk about this in portraiture a ton. I called it portrait blindness. But the same applies to anything. After you've stared at an image for 10, 15 minutes, like I was when I was looking at this, you become blind. Trust me, you become blind to the mistakes, issues, errors in perspective, and so on and so forth. As soon as you look at it in a mirror, or as soon as you look at it, this is a mirror image, just upside down. Then you go, oh, 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 now I see my mistakes. Does, does that answer your question? And this is especially important when you're doing figurative stuff. Not nearly as difficult when you're doing architecture as I'm doing right now. But yes, it still applies even to architecture because it's so easy to to make a mistake and not see it so again here's the lady of the shop she should be wearing an apron that's about that's about all the detail we can see and she's got her hand out welcoming customers isn't that sweet i mean it's frankly this it really is thomas kincaidish isn't it <laughs> By the way, if you haven't heard me before, I love saying good things about Thomas Kincaid. Um, it was a lot more fun before he passed away. But the reason I like saying good things about him is because in the art community, we all are supposed to hate him. <laughs> I'm being kind of facetious, uh, but kind of not, if you know what I'm talking about. We're supposed to hate him partly because he made a bazillion dollars, and of course, and we didn't. So that's the main reason we hate him. Um, but uh, there's a lot of snobbery that goes on in um, the art community. Okay. And, and I'm against snobbery of any kind, even if it's Thomas Kincaid snobbery. Against Thomas Kincaid. Um, so I like saying good things about him. Good to hear from you, Pat. You're very welcome. Um, this roof doesn't, it doesn't have enough of a pitch. So let me make a correction here real quick. All of a sudden I was ending up with a roof that would collect rain because it didn't have enough of a pitch. Um, I mentioned a little while ago some of my favorite illustrators and I mentioned, <clears throat> uh, among them, um, James Gurney, 
And and as I said, my my grandchildren and I, uh, last night or the night before, I don't remember which. Now we, we sat down and watched a, a couple um a couple YouTube videos by Gurney. <clears throat> Most of the time, I was sitting there groaning, saying, oh my goodness, this guy is so good. Kind of makes you sick. <laughs> and I say that with, you know, you need to find people to make you sick. <laughs> so you can chase them. Be chasing the right people. Don't chase anybody that doesn't make you sick. And you, I hope you know what I mean by that. I mean, of course, this exaggerating language, but chase people that you just and i'm not saying chase me by any means i mean chase somebody way better than me <clears throat> way better than i thank you all you english majors um um oh i was gonna say james gurney here here's a his approach and part of the reason his illustrations are so good is so serious about his uh, prep work, his preparation work. Um, I would say he's famous. He's famous with me anyway. <clears throat> and if you watch some of his videos, you'll see this. He's famous for creating ex elaborate uh, um, models. Like if he's going to draw a dinosaur, very often he'll make the dinosaur. So he's a pretty good sculptor. He'll make the dinosaur out of some kind of clay material and anything else that's lying around the house. He'll create a maquette. You know that word? M-A-Q-U, I think? Maquette. He'll make a model. That's just a fancy word for a model. He'll make a model of the dinosaur and then photograph the model in various uh, types of lighting. Let's see what I'm doing here. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is a really high angle. I had I had misgivings about it a little while ago, but I I yeah, I'm kind of liking it. I think it's it's turning quite charming. Um Oh, there should be window boxes over here, shouldn't there? Of course, with profuse flowers and things hanging down from them. Are you with me? <laughs> Again, and my client might say, no, the window boxes are too much, but removing them is a piece of cake. Um, it, it takes someone with imagination and creativity and a free spirit, if you will, to add them in the first place. So much better to add too much, put in too much than, um, than too little. Um, by the way, um, um, me and me, I know, bad grammar, me and uh, architectural um, themes, houses, buildings, and so forth, um, go together like horse and carriage or something. Um, just in case you're wondering, why I, am I not? building a maquette the way James Gurney does. Well, if I was a better illustrator, I'd probably build a maquette. <laughs> if I was being paid a thousand dollars in illustration, <laughs> I might do that. But I am not, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but um, just in case you're wondering, I want to be I want to be fair to you. Um, I would think it's safe to say that architecture, architectural themes are one of my strong suits um, and I think I think that's safe to say I just made up as you saw I just made up this house right off the top of my head and um, I could I could go on making up a whole lot more than this if, if I needed to um, oh I know how about a, a little round island here with with plants in it Oh my goodness. I mean, this thing is just getting syrupy sweet. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> oh my goodness. And then and then the trees. I'm not going to, I don't want to do much. Of course, remember, I have to render all of this in pen and ink, you know. 
Now let's do some of this lighting because that's that I think that's really a key element of the the drama that I'm trying to convey here. Okay, those two guidelines will help. Ah, hang on, I have to plug in my Nevo camera. Bear with me for just a minute while I find. <clears throat> Hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. Should be all right now. <clears throat> okay, let's do some. And I'm going to need actually more, even more protection. Um, there we go. Let's start doing some shading. It's going to be pretty quick shading. Partly good. Don't forget, my client has not approved of this sketch yet. I could be doing all of this work for nothing. And that's just part of the pain and challenge. That's why you charge your client. Part of what you charge them for is they have the right to change your mind <laughs> to say no that's not really what i wanted and 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 in this case my client may have a very definite concept for what this little inn and coffee shop or tea shop whatever it is the woman the proprietor is a good baker so it's a bakery and bed and breakfast is more what i'm thinking um, but again, cast in a quasi 19th century or early 20th century world. Oh, you know what else would be nice? <laughs> okay. Since, since again, since we're just romancing the heck, would I use isometric? No, I would not. Um, isometric only works... Uh, in the world of literal, um, and here's another name of the establishment, um, isometrics is not an authentic perspective. Uh, isometrics gives you lines this way and this way, as I understand it, and you have to uh, stick uh, with those those lines. It doesn't give you an authentic perspective, and I think my own my eye is showing me now that's a good question if someone has a really hard time faking perspective like what i've done here this is i would call this fake perspective that is i'm, I'm just eyeballing it close is good enough for this illustration i believe um should someone use isometric mm, possibly it is possible but no i i have never done that um, I actually have a, an isometric pad with tracing paper. I did buy one once. I don't remember, think I ever used it, but I did buy one one time. So I have some idea at least what you're talking about. Uh, and here we've got flowers growing around the lamppost. And again, I, I feel like it's my job to take the the creativity. I mean, I feel like what my client wants with this scene is just, just sweetness. This is way at the end of the book, you know, part of the happy ending, if you will, of the book. And and I think what my client really does want is just. All right, are we back? I'm sorry about that. Uh, my camera died because, well, it's a long story. <laughs> uh, it's uh, day before yesterday here in North Carolina was the first day of spring. Uh, and it snowed yesterday, which in North Carolina is quite extraordinary for it to snow this late in the season. But it did. And today it is still quite chilly outside. So I've got a space heater in my office. And my space heater tripped the power strip that was powering my camera. 
So there you go. <laughs> there I am back. Ah, the travails. <laughs> Life's so hard. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I didn't do much while we were gone. I, I jumped up and started trying to remedy the situation as soon as I realized we were off the air. Um... Okay, it's probably getting dreadfully boring for you sitting here watching me do nothing but shading. So let me try to hurry this along quite a bit. Um, and as you can see, that that was a very fast drawing. I only did two, basically two iterations, two versions of the drawing. Um, now the shade, the, the shadow of the house then is going to go just about like that, I think. So again, I'm, I'm going for rather dramatic lighting. It would be much more ordinary for the lighting to be hitting the front of the house. But I'm thinking if the light's hitting the back of the house, then it lets, it just makes for a more dynamic and unusual creative viewpoint. And that's probably what I will send to my client right there. And of course, he may come back and all of this work might be for nothing. That's all just part of the business of being an illustrator. Thank you for your company today. Um, I've enjoyed sharing all this stuff with you. I hope something that I said was helpful or at least entertaining. <laughs> and um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. If you're an artist, please tell some of your other artsy friends. Say, I found this guy. He's incredible. Stretch, stretch for me, would you? <laughs> I don't care if you think I'm incredible. Tell them I am, would you? <laughs> okay, good enough. Have a good day.